other way, about 5'11 American Andre Touchy Feely. By the way, that's the creepiest nickname in MMA. 27 degrees. Opens at minus 220, now minus 225. I'll tell you who not to fall asleep beside. Andre Touchy Feely. Going up against 5'9 Canadian Charles Air Jordan. There's a nickname. Ain't need a knucklehead. That's a good a one. Nickname like Air Jordan. 10 2 0. Opening up a plus 180 at bet 35. Now becoming a slightly bigger dog at plus 187. Let's go with GK. What do you think about this featherweight bout? Is there a move to make? Um, I just really like Andre Feely. I think his game is just kind of complete. It's whether or not he's going to implement his wrestling here. If he does, he he should dominate like fair, fairly easily. I mean, Jordan really, this is a massive step up in competition for him going from Duho Choi to Feely. I don't think Choi was as good as, you know, he was made out to be again, you know, in that fight with Cub Swanson because it was like just a barn burner. But yeah, I think Feely all day here, he has got a five inch reach advantage. Um, he's just the overall package and going from a fight with uh, Sadiq Youssef to Air Jordan. I don't see how he's not going to come away with a victory here. Obviously, I really don't like the juice on minus 225. You can get him by decision minus 120. I think that's um, around reasonable. But um, Andre Feely definitely is a great parlay piece. I just don't I don't see the hype in Jordan. I know he looked good in one fight, but this is a massive step up. I'm going with Andre Feely here. I got a feeling that is Clint's parlay, but I'm just guessing right now. I'm just well, guessing. Making you money in the chat right now, liking Air Jordan plus the 180. What do you think here, Clint? You want me to go after Nick's prediction? Uh-oh. Yeah. So Nick predicted that this is the anchor of my parlay piece. Uh-oh. And what's going on here, folks, is my boy Air Jordan can't get no love. This is my dog, Jimmy. Uh-huh. I'm on plus 195. I got that line before it dropped. I am on the sharp side of this bad boy. He is underrated as all hell. And the best part is I love fading guys who are stepping up in competition. GK is absolutely right. We've got a guy in Feely who is going toe-to-toe with Sadiq Youssef, which is one of the hottest prospects in the division, a monster fighter. But his game plan mixes perfect with what Jordan does best. Let me read you a couple stats. Over his UFC career, which has been a long one, Andre Touchy Feely has averaged four significant strikes per minute, and he absorbs 3.96. So, I mean, just by this much, he's absorbing as many strikes as he's landing, Jimmy. And that's all there is to say about it. We've got a small sample size on Jordan, but let me tell you, from his pre-UFC career, Nothing changes. He averages 4.85 significant strikes per minute and absorbs 4.89. It's the same thing. This kid welcomes a firefight. What he does is he rips the body. He kills his opponent's body at every opportunity, and he rips leg kicks. He reminds me a whole lot of Justin Gaethje, the way he ends combinations with leg kicks. When he's in close, his opponents are trying to clinch. He rips the leg. He does everything he can to wreck his opponents and make them weaker in the later rounds. And that is why he tore apart Duho Choi because Duho Choi was weak when round two came around and Jordan never stops. Feely is an incredible fighter. He's got pop on his punches, but he's going to welcome a brawl with this kid. The only thing that I'm worried about is Feely going back to his grappling. If he takes Jordan down, he's got a significant advantage there. However, I think that Jordan's gas tank is going to hold up, and I think that's a patch that he has been working on in his game. Looking at him on Instagram, kid's been putting some serious muscle on him. You know what that means? That's grappling. That's strength. That's defending takedowns. He's going to have a better time keeping this fight where he wants it, and he's constantly Constantly coming after his opponents until that final bell rings. I have bought in on Air Jordan, Jimmy. I have stuck my flag in the ground. We cashed on him as an underdog against Duho Choi. He's a bigger dog here, and I know it's a step up, but I have got to ride with my boy, Air Jordan. Lock it up. Back in the knuckle head here at plus 180. And we got T-Man's World in the chat agreeing. Beach Boss possibly coming over My to the boys. Kennedy side and making you money. It was all over it, right, from the beginning, making you money, saying, let's go, Clint. Nick, talk to us, man. What do I mean, you think about- coming off the biggest win of his career, uh, not arguably. That's 
But is Superboy overhyped, guys? I mean, really, he's lost his last three fights. One to Charles Jordan, and then Cub, and I believe the other one was – I can't remember. Tiago, Tiago Tavares, maybe? I don't know. Um, that being said, though, if he, it's a smaller cage. If he, was, I think, is going to be able to implement that grappling game that Clint is scared about, put him on the fence, maybe get an inside leg trip, take him to the ground. Now, like you said before, a small cage. But I do think this benefits both guys as well. Yeah, the better inside boxer – Inside the clinch is Jordan, but when it comes to overall striking at range, I believe that um, uh, it's Feely, but he's going to run out of real estate. He's going to know that real soon, and he's going to end up putting him on the cage, taking him down eventually, and I believe he's going to end up submitting him uh, or winning a decision. I'm on Feely here. I'm, I'm not on Jordan. We got Feely looks from Nick and GK, and Clint on a dog alert, and he's got – a lot of great cappers in the chat that are reading, making you money. T Man's World and Beach Boss may just come over to that dark side. There you have it. That's the second fight on the main card this Saturday, June 13th, Apex. Oh, oh, oh.